So quadratic equations, when we graph these things, they'll either look, they'll either look like a, a U that'll open up like this, or they'll look like a U that opens down like this. You've probably studied these with Dr. Carson. With, we did projectile motion, how things move when you, when you throw them in the air, cannonballs, missiles, baseballs, soccer balls. All those kind of things. They have they have this 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 pattern when you graph if you graph time versus distance, time versus height, same kind of thing. So the places we're going, what we're trying to do when we're solving these is, when did they pass through the x-axis? And uh, so in these the places they cross through through the x-axis, you can we can call them solutions. We can call them zeros, and the reason we call them zeros is whatever whatever x is. Y is always equal to zero, right? The other name they have for them are roots. And I don't know what the roots of it, like roots of a tree, that's where the, the tree goes below the ground. I don't know. But these are the three three names that we have for these solutions. And now let's learn a learn a method of doing this. So when do what when does the inverse operations work? Well, uh the method of solving these quadratic equations by inverse operations, it, this only works when the variable occurs once. Don't you like that, huh? I guess you should have written that and said it at the same time. And it's squared somehow. And we're going to see some examples of what I mean by that. Uh, so, so it could be x squared. It could be x plus some number squared. Okay. But if it's, if it's got, you'll see, you'll see, I'm going to give you an example where it doesn't work. Okay. And, the, and then what we need to remember is that taking the square root, taking the square root, right, square root. undoes squaring. And that's when we have a squared. And when you take take when you take this take the square root, there are two solutions. I guess I didn't include that. Solutions. There's a positive square root and a negative square root. And that comes from what's the square root of nine? Well there's a positive three and negative three squared is also nine, right? So that's why there's two solutions. Um, usually it's written this way. If I had x squared equals nine, I take it by taking the, find it by taking the square root and there's two solutions. Not necessarily the square root of nine has two solutions, but in the equation form it does. Okay, getting nitpicky. Just remember when you're solving these and you take the square root, there's two answers. Okay, so then, um, Like you saw when we were when we were factoring, we said it equal to zero. Well, it is equal to zero. Now this is where this is where setting it equal to zero isn't quite so useful, but it's good too. It's good form to get the habit of. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to isolate the x squared by adding 49 to both sides. That makes it positive. And now I want to undo the square. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And we know that the square root of x squared, those cancel each other out. So we're going to get x. And we know the square root of 49 is 7. But then, like I just said, um, because it could be positive 7, it could be negative 7. So x can equal negative 7, x can equal positive 7. And you can see that if we went back in and checked both of these answers... I go back to that original equation and drop in negative 7. That works because negative 7 squared is positive 49. 49 minus 49 is 0. And the same thing works for positive 7, right? So there's two solutions. That's the solution. We just solved it with inverse operations. Pretty easy. A lot easier, easier than factoring. Uh, here's another one uh, that's a little bit different, uh, but not much. I'm first off, I'm going to remember, I want it when I'm all done before I do anything else, I want to have x squared equals a number. So I'm going to add four, add four. 
That leaves me 4x squared equals 8. Now I'm going to divide by 4, divide by 4. That leaves me x squared equals 2. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides. And the square root of x squared is x. And then we have two answers. We have negative square root of 2, which we could write as a decimal, but why go with that messy number? We also know that x, x equals a positive square root of 2. And that's the solution. If we wanted to check, and we certainly could, um, 4 times negative square root of 2 squared minus 4, does that equal 4? Well, let's see. When I square a negative, right, when I square that negative, it turns positive. And when I square a square root, it cancels out because they're inverse operations. So 4 times 2 minus 4, is that equal to 4? Well, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4 checks. <laughs> and the same thing happens for when we have the square root of 2. All right. Uh, we don't have to worry about the negative in this case, but if we square the square root, we get 2. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4 checks, okay? So it doesn't always have to be a perfect whole number and a, a nice integer, right? It can, be, it can be messy like that. In fact, they often are. So another problem here. If you want, why don't you try this one? Stop the video, try it, and come back and see how I do it. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides. Whoops, i got to get a pen going here. So 3x squared equals 75, I believe. Now I'm going to isolate the x squared, divide by 3. And then, oh, this is nice because when I take the square root of both sides of this equation, I have, I have an integer answer. So x can equal negative 5. x can equal positive 5. And we could check it. You know, you can. These things... This is where I'm teaching you a bad habit. I don't always check everything. I probably should. And 3 times 5 squared minus 7. Always go back to the original equation before you do, did anything else with it. Well, let's see. 25 times 3 is 75 uh, minus 768. Yeah, yeah. And the same deal here, right? Okay. Now, this one looks a lot differently but if you go back to that very first slide where I talked about how the variable occurs once and has to be squared somehow, here's a place where this whole thing is being squared. So what I can do is to cancel it out, I'm going to first off take the square root of both sides. And when, I, and when I take the square root of a squared, those undo each other. So all that's left is the x plus 3. And that has to equal 5. But our, isn't it also equal to another number? Remember, when I take the square root of 25, I get x plus 3 also equals negative 5. So now I've got two equations to solve. I'll subtract 3. I'll subtract 3. x can equal 2. I'll subtract 3. Subtract 3. x can equal negative 8. So what I've just done is that's where this equation, if I were to graph it, that's where... Um, that's where it would cross the x-axis, really, or that's where they intersect 5. Actually, it would be a little different here with a 25, but it's a solution, right? And should I check it? Well, maybe I should. Here, let's come back up and try to do some erasing here. Let's erase. Will it let me erase that? Probably won't let me erase it without erasing the whole thing. But can I get you to say, well, let's do it. Why trust me? x plus 2 squared. No, x is 2. Mm. Just a minute here, guys. I haven't had enough coffee yet. Or maybe I've had too much coffee. 2 plus 3 squared. Is that equal to 25? See, that's my original equation. It sure is. And is negative 8 plus 3 squared. Is that also equal to 25? Well, that's negative 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. So, yeah, those check. Okay. So, here's another one. Um, if you want to stop the video and do it, you can. Uh, one thing that I want to caution you about is we have to move that 4 first, okay? So what I'm going to do to move that 4 first is I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by 4. So x minus 2 squared equals 25. And now I'm going to take the square root of both sides, and that leaves me x minus 2 equals negative 5. 
and x minus 2 equals positive 5. Now I'll add 2, add 2. x equals negative 3. I'll add 2, add 2 again. x equals 7. And those are the two solutions, and we can go check it, and we'll get the same answer, right? So the last situation that's here is this one. And remember how we said you had to have the variable only had to show up once, and it's got to be squared? Well, here... Here, it's, here it shows up twice. So we can't use the inverse operations to solve this. We need to do something else. We could try to factor it. Well, I don't know if we want to go into that. You guys have done some factoring. Um, let's see. Maybe, maybe this would be a good one to do and see if it does factor. Um, basically, you can stop the video now if you want. But if you want to try to factor it, let's remember the first thing we want to do is set it equal to zero. So minus 8x. I don't have that nice little template right here. Um, there's no common factor. We got it equal to 0. I'm going to do a times c. Now remember that a is going to be 1. So a, b, c, right? So a is 1, b is 16. So we've got factors of 16. What numbers can I multiply to get 16? Well, I can multiply... Um, negative 1 and negative 16, or negative 1 and positive 16, or negative 1 and po negative 16, but that won't add to give me the 8, so let's not even worry about that. I could do 2 and 8, that's a possibility. Well, negative, well, negative 2 and negative 8 will multiply to give me 16, but that doesn't work to give me 8. Uh, negative 4 and negative 4, that, that, that's the trick, isn't it? And that's what I want. I mean, I could do 4 and 4 also, but uh, I want to get negative 8. So this is the ones I want. So if I set up that little box, uh, x squared and 16, and I write negative 4x, negative 4x. And now I do my factoring out. Let's see, I can factor an x out. I can factor a negative 4 out. I can factor, let's see. I can factor an x out here. I can factor a negative 4 out. So I think, I believe, it's going to be x minus 4 times x minus 4. So doesn't that mean x can equal 4? And there's only one solution here. And that does happen sometimes. And what we'll do when we do in, in two lessons, we're going to learn, we're going to learn about uh, the kinds of solutions these, these can be. Okay, so I, I'll give you some practice uh, with this on another sheet. And actually, man, I don't know if we need, even need another practice with this because the next, the next method of solving equations are, are going to use this, what we just did.